The story of women in racing is more and more the story of racing itself. Past and present, women have always been fans. There's also a long tradition of women as both breeders and owners. Mrs. Payne Whitney's Green Tree Stable and Isabel Sloan's Brookmead were legends in their time. In 1942, seven of the first eight finishers in the Kentucky Derby, including the winner, Shutout, were owned by women. It wasn't until the liberation movement of the 1960s that women started to make real strides in all of racing. Today, as jockeys and grooms, outriders, trainers and vets, from the backstretch to the boardroom, women have become a powerful, positive force in horse racing. Of course, some things have stayed the same. In the 21st century, women are still big fans, women of all ages. They bring a special joy and energy to the sport of kings and queens. show horses. Uh, I've been in New Hampshire with the show horses. I was in Colorado uh, working at Rodeo in Denver. Um, I've been at the racetracks at New York, upstate New York, Delaware, uh, South Carolina, some steeplechasing racing, um, and also Florida. I grew up around horses, showing horses, had horses in my backyard. I have eat, breathed, and slept horses all my life. I had always been interested in the race horses, so I came to the track and gave it a shot. I started as a hot walker, uh, cooling out the horses and just learning from the bottom up. Even though I was a professional in my previous sport, I had to start from the bottom and um, work my way through the ranks to now I'm an assistant trainer and travel all over the East Coast with the race horses. Jenny Young and other women trainers stand on the shoulders of Mary Hirsch the first woman to break into the rough and tumble world of horse training back in 1934. Mary saddled an entry in the Kentucky Derby of 1937, a horse named No Sir. It's a wonderful job. It's a tough life, but a wonderful life. Training race horses is the best job in the world. Rubbing horses can be great too. I love this job. I've worked around the racetrack since I graduated from high school. I love being outdoors and working with the people and the horses. And it's a great, exciting job. What we do in the morning is we clean the buckets and the stalls and get the horses ready to go to the track. And our rider comes in, which is Jenny, and we gallop the horses. Actually, she does. And and our hot walkers cool them out, and then we put on bandages at the end of training and massage the horses. I love racing. I just overall love everything about it. It's great. Outriders are a combination of lifeguard and safety officer at the racetrack, a job that provides real satisfaction. You have people's lives in your hands. Their lives, the horses' lives, and when you actually physically save someone's life, it's kind of... Uh, adrenaline high. I started showing horses and rodeoing and uh, found out you could make money working with the horses. So that's kind of good. It beats going to an office every day. It, to do what you love and 
getting a self-esteem reward for somebody telling you, oh, that was a nice sketch, or thank you. You know, it, it really is heartwarming. Other women see the track from a completely different angle. I live in North Anima, Massachusetts, and I am a state steward. We have an office in the grandstand. We deal with all kinds of issues that arise from anyone that's licensed. Uh, we do scratches for the afternoon. We um, review disciplinary issues. And then we go down to the jocks room and we have films of the previous day's racing. We review those. Then for the afternoon, we go up to the top of the grandstand and we oversee all the races and we make them official. This is absolutely the best job in the world. My job is to check the horses in the morning that are going to be running in the afternoon, make sure that they're fit to race. I get here around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. I have a list of horses uh, that are running in the afternoon, and I go from barn to barn checking each horse. We have them jog um, before us, and we do any other kind of a lameness exam that we think is necessary. Usually jogging is enough. Um, we look at x-rays, if there are any recent x-rays on the horses, if we think it's necessary. Um, the horses that pass inspection will run in the afternoon. During the races, uh, I'm here to assist any horses that might get injured or uh, need medication. I'm addicted to the racetrack, really. These horses are so beautiful. A thoroughbred racehorse, I think, is the most beautiful creature on earth. On the beauty of the beast, everyone agrees. But what's it like to ride a thoroughbred in a race, the good days and the bad? Uh, a lot of times if I'm on a speed horse, I'll come back and say, wow, I had my feet on the dashboard. Uh, I mean, sometimes if I get one that's really fast, I'll just like, you know, like, wow, it was like, you know, it was like being on a freight train or something. And like, if you have a horse that's really slow, and it's, say you have a horse that's in front and stops, I'll tell them, well, geez, you know, I ran out of quarters. Yeah. <laughs> and the parachute got pulled. He caught up with another jockey in the silks room. Really good day I had was in Minnesota. It was my dad's birthday, and I won three races um, on that day. I only rode three, and I won all three, and one was a stakes race. So that was a great day. He had passed away, so that was another thing I thought, like, he was kind of looking over me. I grew up riding horses in Maine and I was in Pony Club, and they always told me I was going too fast. I'd let them go across the field really fast. I'd just be like, let's go! Being a jockey is a tough, dangerous line of work for anyone at any time. It wasn't considered proper work for the so-called weaker sex. Except for isolated examples like Annie Oakley and Dale Evans, the wife of Roy Rogers, most women conform to a proper side saddle world, for better or for worse. Even Annie always wore a skirt, posing for a performer. In the 1950s, women riders were a curiosity, not to be taken seriously. Ladies did ride on Preakness Day in 1958, but only as an exhibition, the Powder Puff Preakness. Just a decade later, Kathy Kustner, after a legal battle, became the first licensed jockey, though Diane Crump in 1969 actually was the first woman to ride in a parimutuel race. Women like Kustner and Crump, Barbara Jo Rubin, Mame Clayson, Tuesday Testa, and Barbara Ader loved the game and blazed a trail with skill and courage. One of the tracks most open to women was Suffolk Downs. Suffolk Downs was really at the front end of the, the women's movement in terms of, of female riders and jockeys. It happened about the late 60s, early 1970s. Prior to that, there were no female jockeys at all. And Suffolk Downs was one of the first places that was really welcoming to them. Women jockey is still a minority in the thoroughbred business. Um, there are, of course, fewer females than there are males. I find the East Coast accepts females a lot better than the West Coast. In 1969, the great promoter Bill Veck, then president of Suffolk Downs, ran a $10,000 handicap with female jockeys only, the so-called Lady Godiva Stakes. 
The race was a six furlong sprint for fillies, naturally, and it attracted an all-star field of riders. The Suffolk Suffragettes ran on a cold, sloppy Saturday in April that was not the powder puff Preakness. As Barbara Ader put it, Other women pay $70 a week to get mud from Helena Rubenstein. I get mine for nothing. Penny Ann Early won the Godiva, her first victory. The previous year, Penny had attempted to ride at Churchill Downs. The boys boycotted, and the race was canceled. Denise Boudreau, for one, ended up being the first female jockey in American racing history to win a meet riding title at a major thoroughbred track. She did that in the early 1970s. Other new roles would open to women, too. It's been a very rocky road since we were involved in Suffolk Downs. Of course, um, I've been involved in the thoroughbred industry for probably 40, 50 years. I think women, you know, have a, have a reasonably good shot at this business. Women riders, exercise riders, male trainers really like female grooms because they have such a rapport with the horses. There are lots of very good women trainers jockeys. It's a little tougher, I think, but this certainly is the opportunity. As far as on a level playing field, no women's division or a men's division, this is really one of the few sports where you get that on a regular basis. Robin Smith competed with energy and talent on that level playing field, becoming a star in the 1970s. Robin's fame increased with rumors of the young jockey's romance with the legendary Fred Astaire. A 45-year age difference was no obstacle to true love. The couple married in 1980, and Robin added homemaking skills to her riding record. Julie Crone was just beginning her rise to fame in the 1980s. Julie would be inducted into the Racing Hall of Fame at the turn of the new century, the first and only woman to enter the hall. I wish I could put every one of you here in a room on a racehorse at the eighth pole. The feeling of doing something and communicating with an animal that you just love so much. And I get to do that every single day of my life. And now I'm sitting up here and I am honored by all the people that I admire. Life can get no better than this. Sometimes it's difficult to see progress. The top women jockeys struggle to get the best horses. Today and historically, women who exercise quality horses in the morning can be shut out from riding the lowliest claimers in the afternoon. I specialize in bad horses. I've ridden horses that were so bad they shouldn't even have been used to give little ones a ride at kitty land. I never have good horses. Through the 2006 Derby, 1,671 starters had gone to the post. Five were ridden by women. Still, a general push toward equality continues throughout the country, and north of the border too. In 2005 and 2006, Emma Jane Wilson won the riding title at Woodbine. It was very difficult for the women who um, eventually started as the pioneers in the sport. They had to deal with a lot of, um, a lot of, I can't think of the word, but discrimination from the other trainers and other riders. It's, it, they didn't think that women could perform in the sport, but now it's really come a long way. I don't think that being a woman holds me back at all. I think you've got to, you know, you've got to be a hundred percent dedicated to it, maybe more so than a guy would be because you're not gonna get, you know, you're not gonna get breaks. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna make it easy for you. But I really think that if if you're committed to it, it's no problem because you know, I haven't had any, I haven't felt like I've had much problem with the whole girl thing. Chris Clayson is someone who knows about the girl thing. I've been on the backside of a racetrack all my life. I was born and raised on the backside of a racetrack. And my mother, Mary Mame Clayson, rode races at Lincoln Downs in 1969, becoming the third woman rider in the country behind Barbara Jo Rubin and Diane Crump. The girl riders here, you watch them, they're, they're uh, awesome. I have an awful lot of respect for women in racing, being my mother being a jockey. Uh, it, 
was a lot of respect in the household for the fact that my mother got up and went to the racetrack every day and worked her ass off. I'm a wife, a mother, and a jockey. Being a mother, I, of course, I have to prepare everything for the little one before I leave. Um, you know, I get her settled with the babysitter, clothes out, you know, what she's going to do for the day. I also have pets, so I have to make sure they're fed, taken out, and put in the kennel for the day, and make sure my husband's up with me. Balancing love of family with love for the job is just as difficult at the racetrack as it is for the rest of America. My husband's my agent, and he's also and an Annie's agent. agent, so we drive in together, and we get here. We're supposed to get here about 6 o'clock, but lately it's been later than that. But um, we come in, get on horses, uh, meet trainers, talk with them, try to hustle new business, and then I head to the jocks room. I try to take a nap and then I prepare myself for my mounts for the afternoon. Average day is getting up at 3.30, quarter to four in the morning, coming to the track, uh, doing your stalls, taking care of your ponies, being tacked up on the track at six. And they get done about five or 5.30. And then I go home and pick up my daughter from school and get to bed real early. <laughs> That's seven days a week. Female jockeys have made progress in racing, but what about other workers at tracks across the nation? Can they survive in the long term in what has traditionally been a male-dominated sport? It's a tough field. It's a very demanding field, and a lot of times women are pretty good at that. I think women trainers and jockeys, grooms, hot walkers, um, it's very difficult for them when they first start off. Um, it is a man's world, and as you gain and earn your spot, and it, it, they seem to accept you a little more. It's a, a wonderful career. It's, um, how, how would I say this? You can fall through the cracks, just be a very strong, positive person. A positive attitude paid off for Janine Sahadi, who saddled two Breeders' Cup winners. While female jockeys remain rare, Women trainers are almost commonplace. Diana Carpenter, Patty Johnson, Shelley Riley, Jennifer Peterson, and others have shaped their own legends. Today, over 600 women actively train horses at tracks throughout America, though they, like jockeys, have a tough time attracting the very best horses. Of those 1,671 Kentucky Derby starters mentioned earlier, 13 were trained by women. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, even women in the stands had to fight for recognition. The spectacle of women going in droves to the racetrack, unaccompanied by gentlemen, and searching high and low for tips, and frantically sending orders to the bookmakers is not an elevating one, and unless it is suppressed, it will greatly harm the turf. In 1893, a California woman loved the races so much she went to court to win the right to place her own wagers. It wasn't until the 1940s that women everywhere were allowed to place their own bets. Today, the attitude toward women at the racetrack has changed. I traveled around with a horse that won the Travers at Saratoga in 77. I went back to ward him off. They wouldn't let me on the grounds because girls weren't allowed to be on the grounds after dark. And since then, it's gone from no girls to girls everywhere. You just have to be strong and stick with it. You got to be strong. Got to be strong-minded. We have to work harder to be treated equal. You know, you have to work a little longer, a little harder. And um, I, don't, I think a lot of people don't realize that. There still is a stigmatism about the equality of women on the backside. When I started out, it was really tough. I'm from a very small town and was a little sheltered. Uh, when I first came to the racetrack, I were, spent a lot of days uh, with tears trying to deal with, um, you know, it's difficult maybe coming in not realizing that um, there's a little bit of sexual discrimination and that there's not as many women back here. And you had to get used to the cat calls and the whistles and the comments about the shape of your this or that. Once in a while, we'll, we're still told that we should be in the house working and somewhere else. And, but 
I ignore it now. It's like, hey, I'm here. You know, it's my job. The management level of racing is still dominated by men, though it's not an exclusive club. Anne Clare, who became the superintendent at Saratoga Racecourse in 1940, was an early pioneer. Clare Court is Saratoga's backstretch exercise area. Anne controlled all operations of the physical plant, from paddock to parking, until her retirement in 1960. From the 1960s to the 90s, Marge Everett ran tracks in Illinois and on the West Coast, a woman of true horsepower. From my point of view in the, in the uh, management end, that's very tough for women. I think that it's, it's very much of a man's club. Among the nation's top racetracks, very few women sit on the governing boards. Female executives at any level remain rare. The numbers seem low for a $40 billion industry that employs, by some estimates, over 200,000 women working full or part-time. Many believe racing could only benefit by turning more frequently to women for their talent and love of the game, as well as a fresh marketing point of view. Like women, men have always come to the racetrack. Men can be enthusiastic too. But to thrive, racing will have to draw more women and families, especially moms, who decide how to spend the family's entertainment dollars. Some women do hold important management posts. Ingrid Furman, a former steward, is now director of the California Horse Racing Board. The retired jockey P.J. Cooksey is now assistant director of the Kentucky Horse Racing Authority. And of course, there's Trish Mosley, who knows the key to women's success in racing. It's not really a job, but it's a, it's a, a passion, I think, more for me. I think women Women are very sensitive to horses, generally. Sensitivity and strength are important, but can women really perform their jobs as well as men? Frankly, in a lot of cases, I think they're doing them better. We do the same job and we do the same work, but I think that women um, have a little bit more compassion and they bond with animals and their owners um, a little better than the average man, not all men, but I think as a rule that we are not afraid to get close to the animals emotionally. We handle the horse differently than a male. There are a lot of trainers that pick females, not only because they have a lot more passion for the business, but they think that a female has uh, a gentle touch and can finesse a horse rather than being a male and um, being a lot more aggressive. I do talk to the horse and I'm nice to them and try to get along with the horse. I don't fight with a horse, I don't manhandle them, I don't beat them really hard with a stick, so maybe I do ride a little differently than some of the men. There are men out there that are able to finesse a horse as well. Yes, I do believe women train horses differently than men. I think that women tend to humanize the horses a little bit more. I mean, I consider them my children. I, I mean, they're my kids. And, um, you know, we assign them nicknames and personalities. And uh, I think that that element helps me. It's an advantage to me because I, I get to know the horses so intimately, whereas I think just by nature, a man doesn't tend to do that. This is rampant, and we just did a three-eighths of a mile breeze, three furlongs. Um, I thought he went well. He was supposed to stay behind the other horse, but unfortunately, he was a little too strong for me, a little too eager, so we ended up going together. But um, he, he worked very strong and galloped out strong, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Often, women rest their horses more frequently than men. They're more likely to let horses be themselves, to let them play outside their stalls, go on vacation. I think a woman has a much gentler touch. 
Um, I don't think we're as aggressive. My day consists of getting up very early in the morning, coming down and feeding and caring for the horses and training them and loving them, mainly. These are my kids. These 12 are my children. This is my family. Because of that attachment, some women try to keep horses in allowance races to avoid losing them in claimers. Do the horses care? I think they last longer, and I think they respond to love. For whatever reason, call it passion or love or talent, women form especially strong bonds with horses. and I love horses. Well, my dad's a jockey, my mom was a trainer, and I do a couple of stalls, and sometimes I ride them. Well, actually, I loved horses since I was real small. I got into racing when I was about 16 years old. Since I was like six years old. So imagine me a five-year-old. For some of you that know me really well, it's probably easier for you, and the other ones that don't, you can use your imagination. Um, I was five years old and I spent uh, the whole summer, which when you're five seems like a lifetime, with my little pony, Stony Baloney, the Wonder Pony. I think in those days, when I was that age, uh, riding around in the hills in Eau Claire and uh, with my friends, little did I know then that I knew what the sport of kings was made of. Um, that we were a bunch of uh, renegade kids risking life and limb, you know, hell bent for leather, up hills, elbows flying, legs kicking around hills, ripping around corners, you know, wind whisking by, you know, vroom, 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 all our pony feet going like that together, you know, and all for those precious bragging rights of, ha ha, I won, I beat you, I beat you, you know. That's when I think I realized what racing was all about. And I think there's thousands of kids all over the world, um, right now with backyard ponies in England, Europe, Japan, everywhere in the world that know what racing is about. When I was a girl and riding a lot, my mother, bless her, and my dad, they thought loving horses would be a safe, temporary distraction from falling in love with boys. I'd grow out of it, of course, with marriage, mortgage, kids. Well, that was a long time ago, and now I'm getting involved with horses again. What I learned was the boyfriends, a husband, kids, everything was a distraction from horses. I want to stay in the racing because I really, really just like the sport and the way it feels when you're on a horse. It makes me feel tall. Bring it in. Racing is open to women as never before. The opportunities are many. There's so many jobs um, on the backside of a track from, from the people that work with the horses to vendors, blacksmiths, veterinarians, assistant veterinarians. There's people that work up in the grandstands, um, on the tow boards, on the windows. In the United States, almost a million horses are involved in racing, and each horse has to be trained, groomed, fed, and ridden. Not to mention the human crowds. Every rail bird at the track needs tender, loving care, too. I'm betting eight to five on Dixie Boy. There's so many different aspects of the racing industry. I would encourage young women or girls that are interested in this field to go for it. Opportunities can go sky high, sky's the limit. You can go to the Derby, Breeders' Cup. I've had many stake wins. We're getting closer. I think this is one industry which is absolutely democratic. And it's the same for horses. Uh, you, some of our horses that we've raised in our backyard have beaten champions. So it's a very, very democratic business, top to bottom. I had um, to find a way to make, you know, make some money and I had always followed racing as a fan, so uh, my mom brought it to my attention. Hey, you know, you're really small. You might, you know, might make a good, good rider. And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. So I went to the track and it just sort of went from there. As for me, uh, like 
Annie here. I come from show horses, and I come from a poor family also, someone who grew up on welfare. And I got a job cleaning stalls and babysitting on a farm that wasn't too far away. Eventually, the, the farm asked if I would consider breaking some yearlings for them, and I said, sure, why not? So being young, I got on these yearlings, uh, broke them for them, pay me pretty good money. And I'm like, wow, you know, you can make money at this versus just a, a ribbon for a show horse. Well, needless to say, ditched the show horse, got involved with the thoroughbreds, and voila, <laughs> here I am today. Do you think women should go after those opportunities? Go, baby, go. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm happy. I sure do. I think it's great. If you want to do it, that's good, but have get an education first. Get a college education first. So when you get tired, you have something to fall back on. Let's go. Women have arrived in American horse racing from coast to coast, bringing a new energy and fresh perspective to the industry. They've won their spurs with talent and hard work, and something more, heart, compassion, a real love for the game, a real love for the horse. It hasn't always been an easy trip, but women have come a long way from obscurity to the winner's circle, from the back barns to the Hall of Fame. Twenty years ago, it, there wasn't many women around on the backside. Now we have women horse trainers, we have uh, w women grooms. Uh, they're, they're readily into the fabric of the backside now. I mean, there's no getting around it. You come to the backside of a racetrack or to the racetrack in the course of a day, you got to deal with a, a woman. We haven't time to mention all the women in racing: tellers, owners, announcers or the young woman who rings post-time warnings at Saratoga. We do want to mention our bugler, Bonnie Brown, who introduces the horses at Arlington Park. Get tied on. 